Dame uh, Dash in the building. What's happening? Yeah. Thank you for that introduction. I Man, no doubt. Hey. Hip Hop DX up in here. So it's only real. It's only real. Right. How you doing, brother? It's been a while since I've seen you. That's not been that long. A couple yeah, weeks, so, couple yeah. months. Yeah, so I've seen you since 2015. I've seen him in the weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know him from the weeks. That's my man. Man. Um, you know, he, he, he connected me with Be Real. I was like, Be Real? Guess I want that. that that's my dude. Man, yeah. Yeah. We, we was talking about you the other night. Hey, we oh, was, yeah? hey I just, yeah. Uh, yeah, we saw the snow. Be Real's my best friend, by the way. Yeah, that's, BFFs. <laughs> that's my best friend. I don't care what nobody says. Uh, I saw the smoke box interview. That was, uh, that was great. Yeah, no, I like the way he's doing things and, uh, you know, how he, uh, He's monetizing his brand And you know He sees the future But doing it On his terms You know anybody You know And also enjoying life You know yeah. what I mean Like when, when you're really good At something You know people expect Things to be exactly the same 20-30 years later And not everybody Can sustain You know But like certain people Do things so good That 20 years later They're exactly How you want to see them And be real Is exactly how you want to see them Like a factory And he, yep. you know Making content And you know Taking things into his You know I can see in the future He's going to have A television network on yeah. his terms, you know, his, hand, his hands in a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, it's it's if you've built a brand, you know, for years, and, and you also have a celebrity, and you have a business mind, you can now leverage your celebrity with the business. So now you don't have to pay somebody to do the business, or you don't have to pay somebody to be the celebrity. You're both. And once you understand that, and you you know, not everyone knows how to monetize their brand, especially if they have an A one brand like a Cypress Hill, or you've consistently been that guy for years. Yeah. You know how you can become that. Boss of a whole genre You know what I'm saying Or right. be in control Of the monetization of it And because of The millennial Way people are approaching things On the internet It's so easy to be seen These right. days and to uh, be relevant. Automatic exposure There's just no excusing it If you, if you out hustle You're gonna win And you know If you start with celebrity Like a lot of people That don't have celebrity Just out hustle you And end up with all these you know, All this, this money All these uh, millions of followers And so, Subscriptions on their uh, channels and right, all that. Right. So imagine checks with, from YouTube. <laughs> imagine with the celebrity. You know, it's just a new world out there. So it, it's interesting. And you know I, I, mean? I really feel like indirectly, you were like a, a main reason. A lot of the people nowadays are doing what they're doing. Yeah, definitely paved uh, the way for the hustler artists that have so. a brand. You know, I, I spent the last ten years trying to bring awareness to that. You know what I'm saying? Independence. So, Independence, a lifestyle, a different way of thinking. Like, you know, y'all got to remember, you know, 10 years ago, I was only known for Rockefeller. Regardless of what I did, whether I did fashion or made movies and put whatever who on, whatever, I'm known for Rockefeller. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I almost had to live a Rockefeller life to become Rockefeller. Like, before there was Rockefeller, I was in the street for like six, seven years hard. Yeah. And then that's what I appealed to. So the new brand that I had to build, I had to live it. So for seven years, I had to do things a completely different way. So I had to kick corporate all together, which is what I wanted to do, and then aggregate all kind of new kinds of talent from all over the world. And they had to be thinking and like-minded, and I was giving them a platform and showcasing that it could be done so that the rest of the world would do it. Like, I was doing webisodes in 2009 with right. Black Rock when I was right. putting RZA I remember that. And, yep. and Most Def with the yep. Black Keys. You know what I'm saying? Before they even, you know, was on television. Right. It was just to cultivate because it was like I saw the future, but everyone else kind of had to catch up. You know what I'm saying? And and you didn't know how to monetize. People hadn't built. You know, you couldn't outsource. You could. You know, you didn't know whether to have your own player, whether to build, what you could out, all, all of that stuff. So I was looking at what was happening, and I was like, look, I'm gonna just make the work because in a minute there's gonna be all these things built in places to sell it, and the ways to monetize it, and then also. The good thing about content is it's timeless. So, like, let's say I run into a Wiz Khalifa before he breaks, which I did, right? Or, or, or you know, a currency or a Black Keys. I could get as much content as possible because I knew they were gonna leave once they broke, once they, you know, made it, and I would still have the content, and the content will be worth so much more. So I just aggregated content, content, content of the people that I saw that were gonna be the future. So it was guys like Jay Electronica. It was guys like Most Def, which was already the future, but he's still like you know legendary. Erica Badu, right? You know the Black Keys, Sleigh Bells. You know all different kind of genres, indie music. I had all kind of music, and I was just capturing it. And now, you know, I'm driving traffic to Dame Dash Studios, um, YouTube channel, as well as Dame Dash Studios like network where you can subscribe to it and you can see everything in its long form. So you see everything I've done, everything I'm doing, all of that. And it's like 
That's nothing new now. Everyone's doing it. Everyone's doing it. But I've been developing it for 10 years. I have, you know, five, six, seven (laughs) years worth of straight content. I've been aggregating content since Rockefeller. And when I first signed Kanye, when I was running around the world, like that's International Grizzly. Where are you finding your inspiration from? Are you seeing the vision of you're seeing the future? How do you, how would you explain? Once I saw the internet, I saw the, 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 like I saw it like CDs from digital to CDs. I knew it was like CDs would still exist, but I knew once the rest of the world got used to doing it a certain way, they were going to do it that way. So me, I'm older. So I'm used to, I'm black and white TVs. I had that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, my daughter doesn't even know a world without the internet. I had to build an empire without an internet. And now there's an internet. So I right. can, I got that hustle still, plus all the content, all the credibility, and, you know, actually have lived that indie lifestyle to say that it's sustainable. I'm still here. And now it's like another chapter. So that's why I'm going hard, doing the television so that I could bring attention to what we're doing on the internet. So yeah. Dame Dash Studios YouTube, Dame Dash Studios.com, which is my version of Netflix. Well, it's a consistent evolution. Right. Leading the pack, though. Yeah. So sometimes it takes people a little longer to catch up. But yeah. well, uh, yeah, it's cool. but I, like, I like that you are sharing uh, the knowledge and the insight now. Because I, I want every, the more people that know, the more people that will be customer. I can be their customer. They can be my customer. Right. The internet, the great thing about the internet is about sharing. Yeah. Like you want Like you, Cause you know I came up when everybody Was like nah Fuck that Keeping Nobody everything. worked Nobody together. wanted to Yeah Nobody As DJs, DJs we would, secret to ball Yeah, right. you know yeah. Right? Secret. But, right. but, but when we would co- Even DJs would cover <laughs> Would cover our labels So other DJs couldn't know What we were playing Right Shit Now like we that. gotta go look At the computer screen And there's even an AM code Where you can delete that So you can't even see But Listen, I, you know I, It's all about sharing now As far I, as like the music I, I, We want everyone Playing your shit on I was your having shit. a Not to cut you off right I was having a conversation With my man Steve Mack The other day And this was the battle The infamous battle um, that we had between Jay Z and DMX in the pool hall in the Bronx, and you know Big L was taping, and why was like, yo, don't tape us, cause our shit ain't copyrighted. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, come on, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we didn't take any of DMX's parts, but we got all the J's and everything else. By, take by Big L, but it was like just being so much so worried about everybody stealing yeah, from exposure. you. Imagine overexposure. But imagine the documentary right now if we could show the actual battle between DMX and fucking Jay Z. Might show change, both of the might change perception on who's who's fan. You know, <laughs> it's just it's just legendary. It's like being able to see Jimi Hendrix, you know, battle Janis Joplin or something. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Slash. <laughs> we're, we're, we're Mick Jagger behind the camera. Yeah, you know what I'm, we're Mick Jagger taping. Yeah, like yeah. what the fuck? This is what's really going on. This is the DNA of what's affected pop culture for years to come after that. To be able to revisit it and see it, it was like when I was young, I always knew I was making history. I just know how much. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I knew I was like, oh, I in the, like in the moment it felt like when I was hanging out with Big L, I magic. knew because we it was the first. When you're the first at something, you know you're gonna be the you know it's gonna go down in history. So it's like. What I see is people that document it and make movies like Elvis and the Beatles and Pink Floyd. Those are the ones that go down in history because you're providing the visuals. It's the truth. Yeah. Like, I hear about the way people say my life is going and it don't be nothing near that. It's like, but then the only reason why you know what's going on is because I got Instagram now and it's the internet. Had there been no internet or Instagram, y'all thought I was living in a shelter somewhere. The way they be, <laughs> the way they blow it, you up, right? The way they be having yeah, it, yeah, it'd be crazy. Yeah. I think it's hilarious, and I think it keeps me relevant, and it's dope. But you know, my actual reality is my wealth is my woman and my right. family. And as long as my kids are living good, and as long as my woman's living good, and as long as we can be fresh, and as long as we got businesses on our terms, that's all that counts. You know, it's not about what it looked like. It's about our backyard. It's about what y'all don't see. And, and right. that's what social media gives you the ability to do, to connect with a person on a personal level so they know whether to believe in you or not, so to know whether or not you're the real deal. Like, you know, a lot of people they have distance because once you find, like, you ever heard Ralph Lauren talk? No. Well, I've only seen quotes. You've seen quotes. quotes right. But do you hear him talk? Never. No. Because you're going to hear a Jewish sounding dude that doesn't sound so aspirational. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you, you know he they, they can contrive but now with social media you want to hear him talk right i want to i want to see i don't want to hear him i want to see him i want to see you yeah. understand i want to now you now people got to really be who they say they are they have to show it you look you can now, look let me under ask the you hood this. you know what let i'm saying let me ask you this though you talk about your wealth being your family and your woman and your children now has is that perspective always been there or does it no, take, I it a takes a, a growth it takes a certain growth to get to this time to realize what wealth really is well definitely it's, as far as the evolution you know when you're when you're having experience you know it's like trial and error so my name's damon dash i live a, a pretty fast life I, I i've done a lot fast so I've, I've i've been able to have these experiences fast i've been able to be around enough beautiful women fast to know the difference between what a good woman and what's not but at the end of the day 
The only reason why I got fresh, the only reason why I bought cars, the only reason why I wore jewelry was to attract women. Right. You know what I'm saying? And live so, the gimmick of the Rockefeller gimmick. Well, it was really, I really was trying to get girls. Like, who can, you know what I'm saying? Like, you <laughs> that know, was the main objective. Why else would you get fresh? Right, I'm not right, getting fresh yeah. for dudes. For you, sure, know, at least for not, sure. you know, that's not my thing. You right. know what I'm saying? So I was only getting fresh to attract more women. I only wanted more money so I could buy more shit so I could attract more women. Right. You understand what I'm saying? More and where I'm from, you know, a woman is almost like a trophy. The bad, the badder your chick is, the iller you right, are, the right. more power you have. You know what I'm saying? So... But once I found that woman, you know, I had found that in Aaliyah. You know what I'm saying? And I felt what true love was. I was like, oh, shit, that's love. That's all I want. I, now I found the woman. I don't need to go and get fresh for nobody but her. Yeah. And, you know, she passed. And, you know, what it taught me was how to love a woman and appreciate it when that time came. So now my girl now, Raquel, she, you know, I'm like, oh, best friend. I ain't got to go out. You know, all this other stuff. What, yeah, it's like what amazing. I, like, what I, only reason why you go to the club really is to recruit or get money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Either you're recruiting you. business, recruiting women, or you getting paid to be out there. To, to just be out there for no reason makes no sense. You get out there so you can meet a fine chick and the next day you could be watching, chilling, Netflixing with her. And you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So once you find that girl, you can chill in Netflix with every you day. You need to go out no more. Fuck you need to go out for? Unless it's some... I don't even want to go out. Unless I just you're wanna, selling something. Exactly. Unless and, and looking when to I, buy. And when I do go out, I want it to be in a place that she can go and be comfortable and that she could showcase exactly what it is because right now if you're into who, who I am and my mentality my mentality is yo distribute love man yeah you know what I'm saying and, and you I've find that woman that. that's and that you, I've been you seeing I got that puppies and, around and shit like yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's not, I'm not <laughs> popping bottles and pouring champagne he's petting puppies <laughs> puppies man I'm not yelling and you just know? to uh I mean, I've had the pleasure to meet Raquel uh, a few amount of times. Hey, she cops with me. Hey, she, hey she's a real she, one. You, hey, you can tell. She rides out. She's a hey, rider. You need that. That's, trust me, that's the key we, to life. That's the key to life. Cop, we cop together. You know what I'm saying? You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's dang girl. They cop together. She couldn't get it. He get it. Whatever. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Tell me about the invest in women. Speak to me about that a little bit. What does that mean? It's just, all right, my, in, in my experience, every male that I've invested in as far as for, uh, you know, to monetize, to build as a brand, to make money with in the future. Once we got where we had to go, they broke out and I couldn't make no more money with it. You know what I'm saying? And I just think it's in a man's nature to have some sort of a co competitive resentment with another dude because he wants to be number one. Yeah, be his know? own man. Every wants, man. Every man wants to. Man. So, you know. Internal it's, instinct. So in, in my experience, investing in other dudes hasn't turned into any long term um, um, wealth, happiness. You know, again, I don't really want to be around dudes all day. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it was like, real. but I did notice when I'm around women, it's nothing but love. You know what I'm saying? Like the difference between working out and boxing is a dude's in front of you trying to beat you up. In yoga, there's a girl that's telling you it's all right and she's stretching you out. And, you know, the environment is better. And then, you know, when the you, pain is pleasurable. Yeah. He's like, ah, this is great. <laughs> I mean, sweaty, you know. Sweating. <laughs> sweat, not, nothing is ever wrong with being yeah. around a bunch of sweaty women. Yeah, nah, nah. Would you ever be around sweaty women or sweaty dudes? Yeah, exactly. Would you rather smell Depends on your perspective. Yeah. A, a wet, a smelly, <laughs> wet. Or a musty ass dude. Musty dude or a nice, <laughs> you know. Flowery, flowery woman, flowery woman <laughs> and the sweat looks beautiful. It's glistens. You know, they don't sweat; they perspire. If, if the sweat gets on your mouth or something, you're not mad about it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, they I flick just, it on you doing you some move. Care. It ain't a problem. So, and, and then also, when you invest in somebody you love, and you know you have a family with them, let's say things don't work out, at least you know your investment is going to your children. More love. Right. So you, you know, even with Rachel, my ex-wife, when things went sideways, the the company I invested in. If I'm even if I get robbed, I know she gonna pay my kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. and I'm going through it with that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it, 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 women just I'd rather be around women. I think you know, there's no not so much testosterone. There's not so much competition. And True. if you treat a woman right and you're honest with her, they'll ride out. At least a good woman, and I know that because I got one. Yeah. She rides out. She's ride or die. Like period. That's that. You know what I mean? And I've seen it. It's like. You know, when you get with a chick when you're already balling, you never really know because it's attractive to be balling, to yes. be that guy. You know, it's hard to know. But when you get with a girl when things are questionable and she got to fight with you when people are saying one thing, but she's living in a real reality, and she, you know, she's tested, it makes you trust her more. So Rocky also came around in defining times, like when the foreclosures was happening and the tax man was coming around. She was there. She saw the truth and she chose to go with the truth as opposed to what the perception was saying she's always trust him and then with all of that riding out then you fall in love for sure you know and then it's just like you know now you're happy about the fact that if you're doing well you could spend money on someone that deserves it you know and what we'll I'm saying appreciate it and I will appreciate and reciprocate it reciprocate with right? love <laughs> like I spend money on people that don't deserve it often and it fucking I don't enjoy it you know what I'm saying but when you get to spend money with someone that helped you make it 
they deserve it. You know, and, and you feel good about it. You don't feel like a Johnny. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And 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 that's the number one thing. You know. So yeah, that's the investor woman thing, man. Like you know, find a good woman, chill out. That's all you want to do. You, you know, make her happy. Like, cook every day. Rocky cooks every day. You know, had the chef pick the chef pocket, looked at every <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got every recipe, <laughs> and, 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 and that was just and made it your own. Now I, now it's like 15 straight good meals made just the way I want, back to back to back to back to back. You nice. know, and I'm in there just spending time, and then we go work. Every office we have, I always make sure there's a place for me to sit while she does whatever she's doing. It's really, uh, you know, it, it, it's that 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 Ronnie. Ro I'm Ronnie Romance right now. Hey, you know it's a beautiful saying? dynamic though when you I'm have Ronnie that Romance. kind of support. Okay. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> it's all about you, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Romance right now. Everybody should just be alone. You definitely get a home cooked meal when you get home tonight. Every, I get two. <laughs> she found the beef bacon. I don't eat pork. She found the beef bacon for me. A whole, all that. Like everything's perfect, man. We didn't, so, uh, we didn't get any cookies though. I seem to be bringing the cookies because Boogie's in um, New York. So you know that's what, that's that's the thing. Oh yeah, that's what, okay. So that's a the fresh. We well, the thing about it fresh. is he doesn't use any preservatives. So by yep, the time we get over here, they're not fresh. So what he's not flight alone. Well, what he's doing is selling cookie dough, and he's just made a, a video game from his uh from his uh. uh from the chips, chips video game. Oh, dope, dope. And he's supposed to like be launching it at Microsoft in New York and all that. Folks be killing me, man. Uh, he's, doing, he's doing it big. <laughs> yeah, now he's doing big things. He's playing yeah, seeds, and if he's consistent, he'll be real. I, I'm definitely gonna be spending his bread. <laughs> I can't wait. I don't even know. I'll be like, man, give me the card, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>